What a beautiful group of people we have here today. Um, I had a speech for you, but I'm so overcome by emotion that I don't know. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, my name is Hina Kidwai, and I speak to you today as an American Muslim mom who has brought her first grader to this beautiful event, telling her that this has been organized by the townspeople of Joplin for their Muslim neighbors. I want to make sure that my daughter's young mind registers these images of positivity, love, and humanity, and of Joplin's people reaching out to each other, regardless of religion, race, or color. I want that image to stay in her mind as she grows. I want to tell you a story from two years ago when our mosque, the Islamic Society of Joplin, had ended a month-long period of fasting and charity, which we call Ramadan, and we were getting ready for our celebration of Eid. Instead of just celebrating that year, our mosque decided to do something different. It was a coincidence that our end of Ramadan coincided with 9-11 that year, which the President of the U.S. had designated as a day of service and remembrance. Americans of all faiths and traditions were urged to reach out and serve their communities, and so we did. We as a small community hosted our first day of caring for the needy and homeless in Joplin. Apart from the free clothing for adults and children, diapers, blankets, toys, we also handed out school supplies for the school year that had just started. Um, a local vendor at Knott Park Mall offered food for the homeless and needy at his own expense. Our biggest resource though within our mosque was our physicians. Since Joplin happens to be a medically underserved area, the Joplin Muslim community is largely comprised of Muslim physicians who travel from across the country to serve in Joplin. These Muslim physicians conducted free health checks that year of Joplin's community on that day. It was on this day of caring two years ago that we felt a stirring of something within us that not only our religion teaches us to do, but so does yours. We connected with the people of Joplin and formed bonds of humanity and brotherhood. On that day, in the words of Dr. Iqbal Boda, who's here today, we simply practiced what our religion preaches. The Joplin Globe that year quoted him as saying, all faiths teach us to take care of underserved people, whether it's Christianity, Judaism, or Islam. When someone is suffering, you can see it in their faces. Crying has no language, as tears are all the same color. Little did we know that two years from that day, our mosque would itself be in a position where the people of Joplin would extend a helping hand to us. We have truly come full circle. A year later, on May 22nd, as our mosque completed its Sunday school graduation with a picnic, and as we sent off Dr. Boda's eldest daughter to her Joplin High School graduation as one of the top three grads to give her speech, we had no idea that our lives, along with the lives of many in Joplin, were to change forever. The EF5 tornado hit at 541 that evening, and many of us were to lose friends and family, homes and belongings. The tornado aftermath was one of the busiest times for us, for all of us, as a congregation. The tornado tore through our town and bared open the wounds in our souls. But the town of Joplin came together as one. The world began to take notice as something miraculous was happening in Joplin. Just like so many of you did in your churches and synagogues, we too raised funds and donated relief goods to local distribution centers and physically volunteered to clean up the debris around town. We hosted volunteers and relief organizations from all across the nation at our mosque, and we also hosted them in our homes from where they left to clear debris and chop down tree, tongue, tree trunks and clear yards. My most poignant story of volunteers at that time was of a Muslim family who drove down from Cape Girardeau, um, of a Muslim physician, Dr. Ahmed Sheikh and his wife, and they drove down with three of their sons, all under age eight. They stayed at our house, and I expected his wife Maria to leave her kids behind as they went out to volunteer the next day. Instead, she took them with her, saying that it is important for them to see and serve as Muslims and as Americans winning my admiration for her in the process. We crossed all barriers of color, religion, and race in reaching out to those around us. It is my honor to say that we have present amongst us today members of Catholic Charities, 
and members of the Islamic Circle of North America, ICNA, which are both organizations that we worked hand in hand with at our mosque after the tornado. I'm proud to say that ICNA is here once again uh, today, as, and they, of their own accord, have provided over 500 backpacks as a gesture of goodwill to Joplin students going back to school. And the last I heard, You're going to clap at what comes next. The last I heard, students from Missouri Southern State University were responsible for staying up late last night and spending hours in filling those backpacks and getting them ready to be handed out today. Saudi students. Today is a day to celebrate our human spirit and our similarities. We have more things in common rather than our differences. Judaism, Christianity, Islam are three branches of the world's greatest Abrahamic faiths. Today is also a day to make an effort to reach out because something miraculous is still happening in Joplin. Today is a day to make new friends and to ask new questions. Today is a day to dispel stereotypes and learn about one another. For example, when I dress like this and cover myself out of modesty, I do so because I try to emulate one of the most respected and honorable women in Islam. Guess who that is? The mother of Jesus, Mary. The only woman to have a whole chapter dedicated to her by name in our holy book, the Quran. When I do so, I don't do this out of compulsion or someone forcing me to do so. I do it as a right given to me by my creator in a country that allows me to freely practice my religion according to its beautiful constitution. Yeah. Muslims from around the world prefer to settle down in the U.S. for many reasons. Contrary to the myth that they all flee persecution so in their own countries, I know, I know. many Muslims choose to come down here for its world-class postgraduate down education programs and for the religious freedoms and civil liberties that America offers really? to its citizens. <laughs> when we fast in Ramadan, we fast as Jesus did, that, as a sign of that, submission that, and humility this, and neglecting the this. physical needs of the body while nourishing our souls. When we reach out to you and believe yeah, in equality amongst down. people, we Ow. do so because to us, that's the message of Jesus, Abraham, Moses, Noah, Muhammad, yeah. and do? all the great messengers who came bearing oh, yeah. the same message, peace and blessings be upon them all. When we worked alongside people of different faiths and backgrounds after the tornado, our faiths, just as yours, taught us to do that. We all believe in building bridges. Recently, we have been asked a lot as to why we haven't responded with anger to our mosque burning. And our answer is, it simply isn't our place to punish or respond with anger. We believe that every soul has to answer to its creator, and it is no one else's right to punish. In fact, we can forgive, and that is immensely rewarding. Before the mosque fire, we had gone through 20 days of a daily routine of fasting all day, practicing patience in the face of thirst and hunger, and not complaining. You see, Ramadan to us is like a boot camp for the soul, where one month of our lives sets the tone for the rest of the year. We become deeply spiritual, pray, give charity, and reach out to our fellow human beings. I remember when 9-11 happened, I was in graduate school. Muslims and Muslim organizations all across this nation and the world condemn those terrorist Islam. acts as not in the name of Islam. Hot. President Bush stated that those acts were not in the name of Islam. And yet, a large amount of ignorance and misinformation still exists about Muslims today. Large numbers have, uh, of people have stereotypes about Islam and yet have never met a Muslim person or are unaware of what is common between us. However, I truly believe that whatever may have caused the fire at our mosque, it was not in the spirit and not in the name of Joplin. I hope that someday all of our kids grow up to be like Ashley Carter, who wasted no time in reaching out with love and humanity, with positive energy and goodness, and she was able to bind people together and set off a chain of events that resulted in one good act after another. When I first met Ashley at our Eid lunch, her simple wisdom bowled me over. She said with a calm maturity that it was very important for her to reach out and overwhelm any act of hatred with many acts of love. It is my honor today that I stand here with you, Ashley Carter, and I'm proud to call you one of my dearest friends.
Islam, just like Christianity, Judaism, and all the other great religions of the world, teaches peace and tolerance. There is an ancient story that comes from India, the land where I trace my ethnic origins to, of a local king who refused to let a traveling group of Muslim migrants settle in his land. He did this by offering the Muslim congregation leader a glass of milk, which was full to the brim. This glass of milk was symbolic, as if to say, we are all full and there is simply no space for you. The Muslim congregation leader asked for a spoon of sugar and gently mixed it into the milk and stirred it in. He then said something very symbolic in return. He said, we as Muslims are like this sugar, quietly dissolving in your fabric without disrupting and only adding a sweetness to what was there before. This is what Muslims strive to be like in America. This is what we as a congregation strive to be like in Joplin. The sugar in your milk quietly dissolving and mixing in without disrupting anything, but hoping to leave a lasting taste of sweetness in the greater fabric of this great nation. I'd like to end with a verse from our Quran about humanity. It's from chapter 30, verse 22, and it says, And among his signs is the creation of the skies and the heavens and the earth, and the variations in your languages and your colors, Verily, in that are signs for those who know. God bless you all, and God bless Joplin.